Hello and welcome to Longevity Now, the place to get all your news and views about life extension from around the world. I'm your host, Justin Lowe. Recently on the program, I've focused on outreach efforts as a means to bring about healthy life extension, radical rejuvenation, and unlimited lifespans, and we will continue that today. One of the tried and true methods of spreading ideas throughout human history is through art, and in the modern day, more specifically, film. One of the more interesting documentary films to hit the scene over the last year or two is Transcendent Man, a movie about legendary inventor and futurist Ray Kurzweil. The buzz about Kurzweil is not so much about what he has done, but what he has predicted for the future, a radical transformation of the human species within the next couple of decades. We are not yet there, of course, but the date of today's show, August 2nd, 2011, is significant because it is one day before the live movie event entitled Transcendent Man, a conversation about the future. It is an event where movie theaters across the U.S. will broadcast a live panel discussion with Ray Kurzweil and other big thinkers. We are lucky enough to have the director of Transcendent Man with us here today to discuss the movie and the event. He is Barry Ptolemy. Welcome to the program, Mr. Ptolemy. That's great to be here, Justin. Well, before we get started to get into some of the questions, I was wondering if you could give us a little background information about yourself and how you got interested in Ray Kurzweil and his uh, ideas. Sure. Well, I've been a filmmaker by trade for some time, and uh, I was searching for a project for a number of years when I came across uh, Ray's landmark book in 2005 called The Singularity is Near. It was a New York Times bestseller. And um, he read it, read the first few chapters, and uh, was immediately taken with it and, and uh, knew right then that within, I think, the first evening of, of uh, cracking it that I wanted to make a movie out. This would be my next project, and this is what I wanted to really uh, do. And so I set out. We got, we were able to um, reach out to Ray, who was gracious enough to afford us a meeting, and and then we, he, we pitched him what we wanted to do, and and uh, he thought it was a great idea. And so we were off to the races, um, making transcendent men. All right. Uh, and have you always been kind of interested in technology? That uh, this uh, project also interested you? Yeah. Well, I had been interested. My father had introduced me to um, both computers and technology from a very early age and um, had computers around since the 70s before they were really personal computers. So at least from a subconscious point of view, I could see um, the acceleration of technology. Um, from even my teens, I recall telling people that we had the opportunity to live indefinitely because we would get to another bridge and there would be new technologies, and then that would allow us to get to the next bridge of technologies. That actually would walk around and tell anybody that would listen, you know, we'd be, we'll be able to live indefinitely. Back then, people really didn't uh, listen to that. Sure. Um, but uh, but but now people are listening, and um, so uh, it was it was it was exciting to make, and I felt. I mean, when I read the book, I felt like um, it was like finally someone's articulating ideas. Some of which I shared for a long time. Now, very obviously, articulated them in a whole another way that I could, but yeah. um, they were, you know, I was like-minded for sure about the idea that he was talking about. Okay, and the film, it's been out for a while, your documentary, Transcendent Man, and I see it has had pretty good reception at uh, film festivals in different parts of the world. Uh, tell us a little bit about this live event that's coming up on August 3rd. Sure, well, as you mentioned, we, we did make this film, Transcendent Man, which is now available on DVD, and um, the thing is that the, the subject... Um, of the film and the subject matter is so dense and so deep, you can know, talk about it for hours, you can talk about it for days, in fact we have, so we thought why not we get together a live panel, a blue ribbon panel of experts in different fields, bring them together and we'll talk about the future, and um, I believe this is the first discussion of this type on a national level, it happens tomorrow uh, live here, you can hear the noise in the background, we're here at the Lincoln Center preparing the stage for the event, and it'll be broadcast live to over 500 theaters nationwide. So no matter where you live, there should be a cineplex near you that will be showing the film tomorrow uh, at 8 o'clock. Okay. And um, surely a lot of people will learn a lot more about Ray Kurzweil and his predictions and his ideas. Uh, what? But I want to know also, what is the number one thing or the most important thing that you learned throughout the course of producing the documentary? Well, you know, 
so many things. I mean, uh, uh, suffice to say, you know, I'm, I was reinforced by, you know, Ray's law of accelerating returns, the theory that um, technology builds on itself in telescopes. Um, that's not an intuitive way to think. We actually think linearly or programmed to think linearly. So um, after working on this for years, I'm starting to appreciate exponential growth and I can apply it on a daily basis. And I still have to wake up every morning and, and realize that things are changing exponentially with regards to information technology. It still takes it's something to get used to, but I am appreciating it more every day and it allows you to see the world in a completely different way. So okay. um, seeing, seeing progress through the eyes of exponential growth was, was certainly one of them. And then, uh, you, you know, obviously people who uh, read about Ray or watch Transcendent Man will uh, probably come across th that same revelation. Uh, what about something uh, uh, some people might not realize? Uh, let's say, uh, I just want to ask, what did you learn about Ray himself that most people are unaware of after following him for a couple of years and producing the documentary? Right. Well, I mean, you know, obviously he's, He's an extraordinary individual. I mean, you know, he's not only just one of um, the greatest geniuses of our time or any time for that matter, but he's also extremely wise, has enormous compassion, um, and just uh, has a wonderful um, mind in general uh, in a lot of different ways. I mean, he's, he's, you know, an inventor. He's also a writer. Um, he's an artist. Um, so he's very much a Renaissance man. Um, and I learned about, you know, one of the things that we asked Ray when we first met with him you know, five years ago now, was that we wanted, the, my conditions for making the film were only one, and that we wanted total access to Ray and his life. And he agreed immediately, very courageously. He you know, said, wherever I go, so we had access to him, his friends, his family, his colleagues, um, his office, his home. And I used that to full advantage to try to get to know him and what makes him tick. And I learned that, for example, um, you know, he has this relationship with his late father, and he's been on this quest to actually use technology to try to animate his father in a, in a, in a way that we don't have technology for yet. But that was, I thought, as a filmmaker, a great way to introduce a storyline throughout the film. And I went after that, um, this father and son story. Sure. So I, I, so I, I learned that about him. Okay, yeah, that is very interesting, and you know, I know Ray is rather uh, of a divisive figure uh, among uh, people, uh, you know, technology, uh, people who follow technology, transhumanist circles, uh, you know, there's a lot of debate on how everything is going to evolve, but what about uh, m more common uh, people who watch Transcendent Man? What's the most common uh, comment you get about uh, Ray and his ideas in Transcendent Man? Well, when, it, when you search Twitter on Facebook or just the Internet, when you see what people, lay people everywhere are waking up to when they watch the film, is that the general consensus is, wow, my mind's just blown. I mean, people had no idea. I mean, people know that the future will be an amazing place. You can watch Star Trek and you can understand, okay, yes, I, I can see that we can get to a place in four or five centuries where we'll have a world like the Star Trek universe, for example, or, or other worlds that are depicted in science fiction. What people don't know is that this is going to happen in the next two to three decades. And that's where people start to get their minds blown because they realize this is going to happen to them. This is going to happen on their watch. And that's what's so exciting and why people start to take notice to the film and why it has received the kind of the attention it has is because, there, you know, it's, this is, it's the first time it's been presented sure. this way to lay people everywhere in the form of a film and okay. people are just awakening to the fact. All right. Uh, so do you think society as a whole is ready for more uh, movies like Transcendent Man, whether uh, documentary or sci-fi? You know, does the average moviegoer, uh, you know, thirst for more of this or do they just want, uh, do you think they just uh, are satisfied with the normal fare that's out there? You know, the Terminator movies or Star Trek or such things? Well, I, you know, I think that, you know, our, our, the bar of our, of our, cultural aptitude is continuously on the rise. You know, you, you, doesn't take, you don't have to look back just a few decades to see how more, much more simple films were. You look back all the way to the 40s and, or the 50s, and you see films were even more simple. Now, culture has progressively gotten much more uh, sophisticated and dense and so on and so forth. So I do think that, you know, audiences will seek out and more sophisticated films like this will, will certainly be made and must be made because... 
what art does, as Shakespeare said aptly, was, you know, art is this mirror that we put up to nature. Mm -hmm. And a uh, movie, of course, is the biggest form of this uh, mirror that we have. They're, they're all around the world, this mirror. And it really allows us to reflect upon what it means to be human. And uh, we need that. We wouldn't have this kind of society or this civilization as advanced as it is um, without the arts sure. enabling us to, to inform us and to be able to create this amazing society and civilization. So I do think that's going to continue. And, you know, in the next 10 or 20 years, the types of movies that are made will even make Transcendent yeah. Man look okay. good. Yeah, yeah, to follow up on that, I, I know I've talked with a couple other people from around Hollywood and some other directors who say they would like to do more about you know radical life extension and kind of transhumanist themes. Uh, but uh, you know, I haven't seen a whole lot out there, you know, whether it's TV or whether it's uh, film, movies. Uh, have you um, been on the ground around the uh, uh, art scene there where uh, you've seen some other directors, some other producers uh, with projects ready to go? Yeah, I mean, I think great ideas have, have been bubbling, uh, particularly in, in certain circles. Uh, one of those circles is Hollywood, um, which is a hub, obviously, of, of information. And there are a number of scripts and projects right now. Well, even, you know, um, Roland Emmerich's got a project called The Singularity, which is in pre production right. right now. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Steven, Steven Spielberg is working on Global Apocalypse, which is a dystopian look at the future. And these dystopian films are made is because they make for a great conflict. So The Terminator is a great movie because you have this amazing uh, conflict um, where the world's come to an end or humanity's sure. threatened. Um, and that's why they, they make for, for good films. Um, the truth of the reality is that the future is neither dystopian nor utopian. Um, there'll be radical change, but still we won't be, the world will never be a conflict-free environment. Um, sure. But there are other programs out there, like Fringe is a, is a program on television that kind of gets into these types of ideas. Uh, there's this movie that came out with Bradley Cooper called Limitless, which is very much a singularitarian type of, I, ju I just watched that one. That was uh, pretty intriguing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, you know, these ideas are certainly starting to bubble up, but I think you'll, you're right, though. You'll see by 2012, 2013, you'll see um, a raft of films about these topics. Well, thanks for all that information. Is there any uh, last uh, comments or words you'd uh, want to say about uh, Transcendent Man or the live event that's coming up tomorrow? Well, I just, you know, if you're, if you're interested in these ideas, if you're interested in Ray Kurzweil, if you like the film Transcendent Man, or you're interested in any of our panelists, and I'll, I'll, just, I'll repeat them because they bear repeating. We have uh, the Steve Wozniak on our panel, Deepak Chopra, Michio Kaku, Dean Kamen, Tan Lee, Ray, myself. We have special appearances by Vice President Al Gore, Bill Maher, Quincy Jones, Elon Musk, and Suzanne Summers. So if any of those people strike your fancy, we would, we would love for you to come out to your local theater, you can go to fathomevents.com and put in your zip code and find out where the local Cineplex is that will be playing this tomorrow at 8 o'clock. And, you know, we just we welcome you to come out and then just enjoy. If you want to participate by texting or Facebooking a question, you can use the hashtag TMLive, and um, we'll get your question. And, and if, it, if, if it goes in the pool, it could actually be included in the, in the program. So we do allow for this national discussion to take place. And... Um, yeah, so come on out tomorrow at okay. 8 o'clock and uh, watch, watch the show. All right, well, great. Thanks uh, for being with us today, Mr. Tolmy. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate it. Some great information there, and what a great opportunity to go to the theater and interact with some of the biggest thinkers out there today. Check your local theater tomorrow, August 3rd, to see when and where you can view this live panel. Nice to hear that Mr. Ptolemy anticipates increasing transhumanist themes in movies in the near future. Like he mentioned, the future does not have to be dystopian. It probably will not be a utopia, but it can be made much better with more awareness of the radical change that is ahead. Thanks for listening. Until next time, I'm Justin Lowe.